Hello, friends, and welcome back to Five Agendas. And this is the morning where you get to be introduced to the two little latest arrivals that we have. Just pan the camera down so you can see the two little baby lorikeets who are about a month old and were born hatched um, not on the same day. It was about several days between them. And they're getting their feathers, as you can see. And they're being hand-fed by my kids, my wife. And we're just deciding, still thinking about names for them. But here they are, two little baby lorikeets hatched and raised by the parents that you'll get to hopefully meet in the next video. They're up in a large cage up in the utility room, and uh, they're a bit more um, aggressive. You have to be careful with them. And um, so here you have it. There's your babies. Kind of neat, huh? They've been um, getting more... Um, active and starting to play and it's been fun watching them so here we go we continue the five agendas presentation the everlasting gospel men and linens parabolic time clock the 6 a.m early in the morning the exodus we've talked about the third hour the 9 a.m calvary and the first four feasts in the, um, from the type being antitypically fulfilled. And then we have the between the hours of 9 and 12, which encompasses the 554 to 1840s and the transgression and abomination that took place in between this time on the parabolic time clock. Then we have talked about the concurrent calls at 12 and 3, which is the 1800s, which is the 6th hour, 12 p.m., the 9th hour, the 3 p.m. Now we're going to come back to the two concurrent calls in Matthew 20 and Revelation 10. Now, okay, the first movement provided the chronological architecture for the arrival of the second movement. The first movement was based on the fulfillment of Daniel 814, which were the 2300 evenings and mornings, two parts forming one day. So, so then it was 2300 days and not half days, equaling 2300 years, a day for a year, which says here, which utilize what is called the year day principle. And that's a Bible truth. which in reality are 2,300 years with the commencement date of 457 BC. Counting from 457 BC, we arrive at the chronological fulfillment of the judgment hour of him, the hour of the judgment of him. We'll talk about that shortly, of Revelation 14, 6, 7, which was the year 1844. So here we have a chart on Daniel 8, 14, and he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So in Daniel 8, we're given the end point. In Daniel 9, we're giving, given the starting point. In Daniel 12, we're given the starting point for the 1260, 1290, and the 1335. Because again, remember, the 2300 and the 1290 terminated at the same point. And it was at this point, concerning the vision, concerning the daily and the transgression against it, the men and women said it was to go into here, see, unto 2300 days. Right there. All you have to do is count back. You're given the ending point. You count back 1290 years from the clue you're given in Daniel 12, and you reach the point of 554. So here we have two chronologies. Two divine chronologies at the beginning of the 2300, 
which was the 490 years, going to 34 AD, 70 weeks, with 457 BC. And there's your proof text. Okay. And the 2300 years. 457 starts the 2300 years and the 490. So we have two witnesses, two divine chronologies at the beginning. And what you're going to see is we're going to have two divine chronologies at the end. But within this 2300 years, encapsulated within it, we have the 483 years, which is the seven weeks, 60 weeks, and the two weeks equals the 69 weeks or 483 years from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, in 27 AD at his baptism. There's your text. Okay. And then we have where it says in Daniel 9, in the midst of the week, the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, right there, wounded for our transgressions, he bare our sins, they crucified him, 31 AD, caused the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, he did that, and the veil from the temple was rent. And on either side of those, of, of the midst of the week, you have three and a half years. And three and a half, and three and a half equals one week of seven years, from 27 AD to 34 AD. And there's your text. 34 AD, see, stoning of Stephen, probation or Israel closed. Okay. Two divine chronologies, the 1290 and the 2300, as I'll repeat. It was regarding the daily, which is linked with the 1290, unto when? Concerning it? Unto here. You said 2300, so there's your 2300. And because of Admetay and the question concerning the daily and the transgression, and he said unto here, It's an answer for both parts, counting back 554. And this was the anti-typical day of atonement began, the yearly. Okay. And we talked about the, see so you have the 490 years to here. And then you have the additional 1,810 years to 1844. Okay, see how everything line, lines up on the wonderful numbers prophetic time chart. 2300 from here, minus 457, the year 457 equals 1843. And that's why the mistake was made and the disappointment in 1843, when it should have been 1844, is because of the mistake regarding the zero point and the necessary addition of the plus one, 2300 minus 457 like here, but you have to plus one mathematically to equal 1844. And that's when it began. Now this is a chart that um, we drew up on the whiteboard just to be able to see and, and, and comprehend it and, and, and figure it all out. So we drew the, the years up until the zero point. It's not the zero year because there is no zero year zero, but it's the zero point, and we drew 11 years after that. So numerically, the year 1 AD and the year 1 BC is only counted as one year instead of two years. See, so here's your one. See, instead of it being one year to here, to this one, or and then one year from the zero point to this year, instead of it being two, it's one rather than two. And so when you when you work it out mathematically, the 2300 minus 1854 brings you to 456. But it wasn't in 456 when the going forth of the um, commandment to restore Jerusalem went forth. It was 457. Therefore, you have to add the one. And as well as when you take the 2300 and you minus 457, this is what resulted in the one of the mistakes, errors in the figures on the 1843 chart was 1843. And the Great Disappointment, there's your, four, your first um, movement in Revelation 
ten, the you know it was in your mouth um, as honey, but became it was a bitter disappointment in your belly. So you have to add the plus one to eighteen forty four. That's mathematically, and that's how we worked it all out. And that's a close up of zero point. But instead of it going one year to here, one year to here, and counting this as one two, it's one because of that zero point. So I hope that helps. Um, it helped us to finally realize how the mistake was made and how you actually have to add the plus one to reach 1844. Okay, now this announcement in Revelation 14, 6 to 7 is closely associated with Exodus 2011. And here you will see why. So Revelation 14, 6 and 7, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the age-long or everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. This is the first angel's message, saying with a loud voice, Fear God. This is where John 1, 1 comes in, in the masterpiece of divinity, two eternal divines. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of the judgment of him. The Greek his judgment has come, and, and, worship him that made. In the beginning was the word, worship him that made, and the word was with God. There's your, there's fear God. The word, worship him that made, was God. So worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And I don't think this can be um, exhausted, overstated, or you know, reviewed or locked in too many times. Because what you're going to see coming up with what we're going to share is this aspect of fear God and worship Him that made, and the connection of John 1:1. With two eternal divines, and that Christ is the Lamb slain from before the foundation of the world, and His eternal righteousness and an imputed righteousness. Um, you know, I ask myself, can that be understood? Could, can those aspects be understood without understanding this um, foundationally? Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, okay, and the sea, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, Exodus 20, verse 11. So worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and rested the seventh day. Bless the Sabbath. Yes, the Sabbath here is included, but it's not uh, it doesn't end with that, okay? The Sabbath is important, but here is the truth about the Godhead, because there are so many errors floating around out there right now, and if we don't understand it, if we ignore it, if we neglect it, um, question is, does that affect whether our names are retained in the Lamb's Book of Life? So the fact is, the NIV Bible presents a footnote on Revelation 14.7, Worship Him That Made, and then interestingly, the footnote refers to the reader back to Exodus 20.11, okay, wherein God said, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and the Lord rested the seventh Day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. This announcement in Revelation 14, 6-7, which is more commonly known as the first angel's message, marks the arrival of the time frame of the second movement, okay, in relation to the concurrent call in Revelation 10, 10 and 11. So this is your 12 p.m. and your 3 p.m., your concurrent call, and Matthew 25, which also reveals the fourth commandment, of the covenant of God 
which relates to the restoration of the knowledge of the Ten Commandments, or Ten Commandment Covenant, on planet Earth. But in particular, the Fourth Commandment, which is the true Sabbath day, which in the minds of men has been replaced by the rival false Sabbath known as Sunday. One of the objectives of the second movement would be the restoration of the true Sabbath day, more commonly known as Saturday. But it is not Saturn's day, it is Yahuwah's day. Yahweh. Okay. By way of the two concurrent calls to God's workers in his vineyard on earth, God would reveal the system of truth known as the Antitypical Day of Atonement or the Third Angel's Message, which will finally resolve the sin problem in sinful flesh. And that from Revelation 14.9, and the Third Angel followed them, saying, Remember with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive it as mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So there's this warning. If any man worship, okay, see, like I was saying, the first angel's message, yes, it has something to do with the Sabbath, but it doesn't end there. It's a matter of worship. Is either when you get when you get when you keep going. First angel's message: You're told to fear God and worship Him that made. Third angel's message says, "As if any man worship." It is a matter of worship, okay? And remember, you don't worship a day. You worship someone on that day. So we're either going to be worshiping, you know, our heavenly Father, and Him that made, or we're going to be worshiping. The beast, his image, and as a result of that, we're going to receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. There's your mark of the beast, okay? And there's going to be wrath by so doing. Verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship, worship the beast and his image. Because remember, there was the first beast of Revelation 13. That leopard-like beast. But then there was the second beast, the lamb-like beast, who says that to those that dwell upon the earth. Remember? Um, that they should make an image to the beast, which had this wound by the sword and did live. So the second beast says to those that they should make an image like the first beast. Okay, and over here it says, if any man worship the beast in his image, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, so here's your, um, the third angel's message, which corresponds to the antitypical day of atonement. Okay, as well as the others. Because in verse 12 it says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And the faith of Jesus. Okay. And it's that that's going to resolve the sin problem, sinful flesh, by way of three steps or movements. Now remember that the earthly tabernacle was a figure. It was the service that was an example and shadow. So in the heavenly sanctuary, um, what we've been studying in the last few years is that, you know, Daniel, you see um, a picture of the heavenly sanctuary, <coughs> excuse me, and it's a throne room where, remember, thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands times ten thousands stood before him. Okay, judgment was set and the books were opened, 1844, the end of the 2300 years. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm... <clears throat> just having some computer trouble. I hope this is still working. So here you have, um, you know, in the type you had the courtyard, you had the first apartment, the second apartment, or the first um, holy place and the most holy place, or 
as it is also called the tabernacle of the congregation and the holy place which is the most holy place in the type the high priest went in all the way in, into the most holy place and in a three-step process he cleansed the most holy came out and cleansed the holy place for corporate and came out to the uh, courtyard and cleansed the altar in the court that was where the blood of the bullock and the lord's goat was mingled okay so in this three-step process or movements so that three-step in the type represented Christ's three-step ministration. Okay. Three steps or movements which would commence with the most holy place where God's Ten Commandment law, which includes the Fourth Commandment, Sabbath day, is located. Sin being the transgression of the law. Remember I said earlier in the last video, sin began in heaven. Okay, that sin being the transgression of the law, began in heaven by way of Lucifer, who later turned into the devil or adversary, it is only natural that the cleansing process involves the fact that God is on trial, the hour of the judgment of him, not because of him committing any sin. Since the Bible states that in God there is no darkness, nevertheless, accusations were made by Lucifer that God is unjust, and this was one of the primary reasons as to why there was war in heaven. So why the reason for you know God being placed on judgment? Because he created man, they fell, accusations were laid, and in that judgment scene in Daniel, and as we see here in Revelation 14, the hour of the judgment of him, God was placed on trial. Okay, because here's these angels, these holy angels that didn't fall. They're created beings. They're the ones that have recorded man's sins in the books from beginning till now, you know, up until that point in 1844. Okay, God wants to do something with man. He wants to restore him. Okay. The angels, are they going to agree or disagree? Of course they agreed. And you know, the judgment was set in the books because, you know, the books had to be opened. And, um, you know, we've talked about this in the thought paper that we did on the investigative judgment. Um, in the type, there is no type or figure, example or shadow for an investigative judgment. But what there is, is in the type on the Day of Atonement is a, um, a pre-advent judgment of cleansing that results in the cleansing of the people's not only their sins but their uncleanness okay so Luke 10 18 and Revelation 12 7 and 8 and 9 and he Jesus said unto them I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven see and there was war in heaven his revelation Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. See, sin began in heaven. And that's where the reconciliation of the heavens. In 1844, at the end of the 2300, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The third agenda, reconciliation of the heavens, had to take place. He deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Again, the reason why God was placed on judgment, because sin, he wasn't going to allow sin to rise up again the second time. So were the angels going to allow man, that, that you know, they knew man's state, they had watched. And were, were they going to agree that God was going to take man and make man higher than the angels. Jesus also stated that the devil was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Ye are of your father the devil, Jesus told them. The less of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the, not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of, a, father of it. John 8:44. Okay, so 
that concludes the 12 and 3 p.m. Now in our next video, we're going to move into the 5 p.m., the 11th hour. So stay tuned. God bless. See you next time.